Hello friends, hope you're doing great. So in today's video, we're gonna see a um, different set of error handling activities which are available in UIPA. You might already know error handling is a very basic concept, but it's a very important concept while you're automating any business processes. So in today's video, we're gonna see all the sets, four, four set of activities, I think four activities which comes in UiPath under error handling section which is read through terminal workflow through and try catch so we will see each of these activities one by one and then understand like how we can use these activities in a process so let's get started with read through read through as the name suggests read through something or read through what error right so read through activity you what you can do is basically read through an exception which is already caught how we got an exception so we have we have try catch block if suppose in your try section there is any exception that exception get caught in cache block and to read through the same exception which is caught in your catch block we can use read through activity okay in you know i will explain this read through in a practical example just now but to actually start with read through we need to implement try catch so Try catch is a very basic concept wherein you know we have a section where you specifies okay this is the block where you feel like there might be some present exception and you want to catch that exception or you want to handle that exception so to quickly start on you know practical things so let's drag and drop the try catch block okay this is one way where you can drag and drop where you drag you are dragging drop the dragging and dropping the try catch activity the another way is to actually so let's click on activity and see mm, let's let's use through so again like um, read through is to throw the existing uh, exception which you caught in catch block through is to throw exception which you are defining it so in throw it takes exception object in read through it would it won't take any exception object it will always throw the exception which is caught okay so let's just define or create a new exception okay so how we define a new exception i'll just maximize this new exception and then in the message this is this is system x let's just write system exception So let's click on OK. So what is happening now? So in a sequence, we are throwing an exception. Great. Let's just debug this. Okay. And great. So this is a custom system exception and it got thrown from here. Let's stop this. And like I just said, there are two ways for, uh, you know, adding a try catch activity one like i said go to activities drag and drop this here and the, and the other way is to actually go to your activity and click on right click on that and surround by track catch again right click and then you will see surround by try catch or maybe you can do control t as well okay so there is an error in this it says catch or the finally Expected for try catch activity for try catch. So yeah, why? Because we have kept this try as plan catch as plan. So let's just define this as exception and then go to activity and then just right line. Okay, dropping here and then just write exception dot message and similarly we'll copy to the same and write in our finally final block okay so finally block you may already know right <laughs> this executes in either way if there is any exception or not this this finally i mean the final block will execute always okay so what we did in our try try block we are throwing an exception in and catch we are catching that exception and just writing, writing the 
message the exception matches in the output window and again in the final block we are just writing the finally block let's just write execute it here to understand yep so now let's see an exit here what will happen great process executed will open the output panel to understand okay the automation started this is the custom exception you know message which comes from this and then finally block executed okay just to understand make it more understandable let's just add catch block here and then maybe plus this or space yeah yeah execute it and again okay so output window catch block this is a customization finally block executed great so in this we, we are throwing an exception okay what it says faulted why it's faulted why it's faulted this is just a uh, you know debugging concept where you just enable the execution trial and it says whenever there is an error it highlighted so yeah during your debugging whenever you want to debug a process you can enable it execution trial and even highlight to understand which part of your process is failing or which part successfully executed great fine so let's quickly move to this thing yeah so we saw everything is executing as we want so let's check the v throw now okay so product handling great and then i'll show you one more thing actually we throw and then we are putting it here what i did is i actually put v throw in a try block and see what i'm getting so i'm getting a message uh, error message actually rethrow activity rethrow must be child of catch handler which means we can all we have to always use rethrow in our catch block so let's track this and before that just expand all and then just keep it maybe here great so what we did now we removed our rethrow from our try block and then put it in the rethrow in our catch block let's execute now okay so what do you think the finally will execute now or not hmm? let's see so in this example now again so we are throwing an exception okay as we are in the debug mode so we will just click continue we are rethrowing it and then it rethrows the exception and then continue and then continue and then continue and it throws an error that this is a custom exception of system type. great okay so to understand more on this we'll go to design and just run file okay throws an exception but when we see our output window so what exactly happens the catch block executors throws this where is our finally so finally it didn't got executed this time why because we are throwing our exception i mean re-throwing our exception from the catch block so let's do one thing let's make this try as maybe a child like just write child here and maybe here as child catch block and child finally block great and then just yeah and then right click on this on this with this okay and in this catch we again define exception go to activities right line and just drag drop the right line into here and then write exception dot message message plus we wanna see 
Let me write parallel catch block. I'll just give okay, some times worked. Yeah, fine, great. So parent block added and then copy this from here to here again and we'll just remove this and then parent final block execute it and then complete this super what we did we surrounded our try catch with the parent try catch block okay let's just specify here parent okay so yeah this is our child which is throwing an exception from try caught in catch retrain from catch and then it has a finally block child finally block and then in parent we have a catch block which says parent catch block and a finally with finally catch block so the last time when we executed without a parent try catch what exactly happened is our finally didn't execute because we have retrain the exception from the catch block so this time we have surrounded our try catch i mean the child try catch with the parent try catch to see if our finally block executes this time or not so let's just run this file great so no exception occurred this time everything handled properly let's open the output panel what happens now that child catch block executes first time then the child's finally block executed then the parents catch block executed and then the finally block executed so what we understood from this so if we remove the surrounding parent okay if the if suppose your subtask is having try catch in it and you are re-throwing an exception from the catch block and if suppose your parent um you know if suppose the parent class uh, the parent uh try catch here the parent try catch sequence is not uh, if it is not available then it, it generally it throws an error it, it, it stops the execution it will not uh, you know run the finally block here but once we added it it executes everything smoothly which means we handled it properly so to you know show you again let's collapse everything expand the sequence parent and this time what we're gonna do just remove child keep it up and this will parent will do like this and now just execute okay we got an exception okay so i can stop Go to design and run file. Okay, so this time we got an runtime execution error. Click on click output C. What happened? Child catch block executed, throws an exception. Where is our finally? No, finally didn't execute it. So to execute our finally block, what we did? So with what we did, we created another parent one and just dropped our child in it and then executed the process again. So let's sorry this time I think I clicked on debug. Go to design run file and then the process executed without any error in the output panel child catch finally point this thing yeah so this is how it works you know using throw read through finally parent child correlation let's check the other two activities which are under error handling block okay so click on activities and i think i'm spelling mistake error oh shit Rethrow, we checked, throw, we checked, and try, we checked. What is this? Terminate workflow. Okay, so as the name says, 
terminate the workflow and see from the tool tip uh, details also you can see terminates the running workflow instance raise this workflow completed event in the host and reports error information once the workflow system it cannot be resumed which means once the workflow is you know executed we cannot actually i mean it cannot um, resumes after we terminate it so let's just understand this to actually understand this i'm gonna create a sequence like terminate flow maybe workflow great and this okay and then provide a basic go to activities and then write line terminate flow executed and then maybe I'll go to activities again and then I will handle it then terminate workflow okay so what it says either reason property or exception property is required for the workflow okay so again so exception you can define your set of exception reason is again like a string which you can specify so for here let's just specify a new business business rule exception and in this we say custom business is less rule power okay now great and let's execute i mean we'll use this and what i will do is like i will keep it away here keep this try catch here and then just go to my actually projects and then search for terminate terminate workflow and drag it drop here and then just expand it no argument nothing then to understand better just add few right lines up and end doing what and here we just try and workflow okay so to understand what we did we the output panel, output panel what we are writing entering workflow once the process is good it just says it just writes in the output panel entering workflow then we are invoking our terminate workflow and herein we are using the terminate workflow activity so see i'm just explaining you the concept here but in actual this terminate you can either use it in the catch block or maybe on a specific condition like if uh, decisioning some some business rule is there suppose for example file not found or maybe today is not the specific day to execute the process yeah i know these things um, can be easily done by scheduling also but there might be scenarios where a specific business rule you need to check in based on that you have to terminate the execution so yeah to actually let's debug this you know i'll just ex debug this so yeah executing white line uh, yeah entering workflow we entered in our workflow and it says terminate flow executed here and then i am terminating the flow so so what it does info this has actually terminated the execution and no what it says source invoke workflow execution business rule exception okay now actually run this file and see what exactly happens invoked okay so what entering this terminate executed and it throws an error and it actually stops my execution 
okay so to understand in detail let's do one thing add one more line below this uh, and terminate workflow sequence and dot and let's copy this and paste in sequence and here and then again go to error handling block and execute great so terminate blow sequence entered then we terminated the we use the terminate workflow activity which terminates the flow and after that there is nothing i mean there is direct error okay so how let's let's do one more thing here we'll see and then let's just surround this activity with a try catch great so we have a catch and in catch block let's just type the exception and then maybe in this exception just throw it line okay exception dot message this is for terminate flow so i'll just write terminate And then it's put in space and then plus on canvas. Okay, let's just run the file. No error. Great. Because we handle that terminate thing. But let's see the output panel now. What happened? Execution started. Entering workflow, terminate workflow, it's sequence entered, end workflow, right? Terminate catch customer uh, custom business rule, then yes. So, what happened here is basically terminate workflow, customer business rule error, we define a business rule which is over here so entering workflow terminate flow sequence entered end workflow executed so what is this end workflow where are we are we actually writing anywhere end workflow executed okay so yeah to understand more let's let's just debug this you yeah. know it will give a better understanding so we are in our right line we entered our terminate workflow then we are here and then we terminated it so terminate workflow here we are ending terminate work, work it's not workflow actually workflow I have written but yeah so it's basically workflow and then it is captured i mean we have handled that exception in the catch block and then end workflow okay so you see this part the terminate flow sequence end is not executed why because we are terminating the execution of the workflow here and once he you see from the log message right so entered then this you know once we have terminated this uh we'll be using this terminate activity here then this got caught in the catch block which is terminate workflow so the point here is to focus here is to once we use the terminate activity the you know whatever the steps you write below that will not execute that's the main point here so yeah the terminate flow sequence end you cannot see here so let's now if i you know just if i just disable this part and just execute it maybe disable activity and then save and then error handling and then run 
then you may see there is no error enter your flow terminate sequence enter terminate sequence end so yeah terminate sequence end and then the end workflow catch and all that what we did last time so yeah this is all about uh, the set of error handling activities which are available in your talk and you know maybe this example which i have explained you is not very specific to any business process but the main idea here is to help you understand what exa what exactly happens and where you can use different set of activities which are available under error handling